Good morning and welcome to phase two. Welcome to Drive Ice, I'm Alex and I'm on my way to the performance shop. This is the place I've chosen for the rebuild of Roy, who's right here. The engine is already on, is idling about 750, 800, which is where it's supposed to be. But every time I come to a stop, it dips even lower to about five, just over 500, sometimes even stalls. Let's go. I hope I don't get stranded. We're now cruising at 60 miles per hour, 3000 RPM. I think that's where we're gonna stay for the entire journey. So I have a chat with a few specialists who informed me on the process, the costing, the performance shop came across, really understanding of my position. Big fan of the car. This is an important note because actually I've been to specialists who didn't like her exit. I remember this guy, I shall not name. I asked a few questions and his answer was, no, I don't drive one because they're a piece of crap. That didn't sit right with me ever since. The budget, which grew exponentially. We've done the rust. Please watch this video if you haven't seen it. And this is now phase two, the engine rebuild. I have to make it fit within 5,000 pounds. So that leaves me with about 3,000. It might be tight, especially because we're looking at the clutch. Do some street porting, water pump, oil pump, coils, leads, spark plugs. We might reach 114,000 today. With that kind of mileage, if you are opening the engine, you might as well do the clutch. Just like the rebuild, I can't wait for them to open it and say, yeah, no, it's ever, never been rebuilt. This is the original mileage on the first engine. We'll be there soon. So this is when you've taken on a track, and what, what's his destiny? Don't know, probably use a track toy. Track toy. Yeah, Whose is it? One. The yellow one. Reese's is it? The Reese's, yeah. Nice. And you use that regularly or just on track? No, first time on track the other day. First uh, time on track? Not his first the, time on track, no, but the car. This car's yeah. that car's first yeah. time. Yeah, it did really, really well. They didn't let go once, it was a damp day. I spun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got some fast bends in it as well. What track is that, sorry? Snetterton. A great circuit, fast circuit. We rebuilt the engine about four years ago uh, for the previous owner. Any porting on that one? <laughs> no, stock, no engine. stock engine. It's only a 192. The yellow ones are really rare as well. Yeah, and you don't see many ones. of them. And look at this RX-7. Yeah, it's a customer's car. This is actually a Mazda Heritage fleet car. Oh, right. And the previous owner obviously sold it to another customer of ours. Don't put it in because I don't know if his wife knows. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> Mazda imported from Japan. It's only got a lot of work since then. Obviously, it was a stock car um, on twin turbos. and stock engine, it's an Grady V-mount, single turbo, engine rebuild, last street port. I mean, a relatively small turbo on it, four quarter 257. It's quite small as they go for RX-7s, but mm. it's really responsive. It's making positive boost pressure really early in the rev range. Went to full shebang. I've never tried an RX-7. How can you explain it to me, RX-8 driver? How does it feel, does it differ? RX-8 is a much better driver's car. Okay. A lot, a lot comfier, nothing rattles. and but in a seven, lump in an eight. That, that's the best combination in my eyes. If you want the best of both worlds. <laughs> I mean, it's nice having the, the speed and stuff and the fast and the noises, but. But in terms of corners, yeah, I come from the mountains, cars that have to do well on mountain roads. Oh, yeah. Right, right. interesting. Yeah. I mean, you're not talking like they're, they're horrible to drive. No, but no, but. In a comparison between yeah. the two. Even the 192s will keep up with most sort of fast cars, tire cars the average Porsche, all on the corner in, you'll be all over other cars. The straight's okay, they haven't got the torque, so you are gonna lose them, yeah. but you're back on them again on the corner. You need to drop it down in the gear. Yeah, you need you, to use the revs. It also depends on what you wanna do with your car. If you wanna improve that speed and that handling, lowering spring is definitely the way forward. You don't have to go super low. I'd recommend Meister R's. Strut, yeah, spring, yeah. shock assembly. Yeah. The OM ones are decent. The OEM suspension setup is, is pretty good. I mean, the only thing in my eyes that lets down is the rear anti-roll bar. If you literally have a stock setup with a aftermarket anti-roll bar set, like white line, do a set for the front and rear, it, you get a massive difference. Let's for, do for the no engine first, yeah, yeah. then we'll talk about <laughs> Engine rebuild. Yep. Colours red and silver. Street port rather than largest large street port. Sorry. At all. It, when, any kind of porting, you reduce the longevity because because of what you're doing, you're cutting metal away. If you want an engine that's longevity and it's going to be nice and reliable, I'd, I'd say spend the money elsewhere before thinking about that. Unless okay. you really want 
supporting like so die I need to have it. If, if you're gonna do it, I'd recommend either street or Astra. I won't recommend half bridge or full bridge. It's reduced drivability a huge amount. No, but now I'm more tempted at not touching it at all. Put a pin in there and I'll think about it for a minute. Rigor House is it's not even debatable, I'd just do it. Yep, yeah. Yep. For the money you need to spend doing it. It's one of the best things you can do. We've had customers who want to do porting over very great housings and... It doesn't make any sense. No, because you're trying to do this to make more power. Compression is power. The more compression you have, the more yeah. power you make. Is it, is it a sort of lapping? Is it like taking a, 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 a tiny fine, bit? fine, fine yeah, layer yeah. off, yeah. Obviously, new is always going to be better. One new iron, you're talking about 800? It's about 860 pounds. Right, right, okay. Um, I mean, I don't know if you looked at the car. I've just done a lot of rust to keep it running. RX-7, so I could pull one out from over there and there'll be very little rust on it. I, I come um, from Italy where there's no grit, so there's no salt in yeah. the grit, and there's not that much rain. When they lift them, the RX-8 for the first time, for, oh my God, it was terrible, and the mechanic went like, oh, that looks all right to me. I was like, what? <laughs> this is like a wreck. Anyhow. Um, thermostat. Thermostat of water we're talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. yeah. There probably is nothing wrong with your one, but at the time of doing the build, it's worth doing. All pump, water pump, I always recommend 100%. You're talking parts that are gonna save your engine, give you longevity, and reliability. Yeah. It's a bit oily at the moment. I don't know where it comes from. I don't see any oil above. So I assume it's either the gasket or the sump yeah. itself. So I mean, sump wise, you can get a brand new, still get brand new sumps from Mazda. They won't last forever. If you're going to change the sump, spend a little bit more now for longevity and either get a Greddy sump or a run right performance sump. Can the OM ones be refurbished at all? Yeah, I mean, you could weld them, but... I'm weld them? What, what is the problem with them? They catch a lot of road salt, road dirt, and what happens is the front face rusts, basically, and you get holes, and then you leave. Oh, actual holes, yeah, actual holes we're talking about. Right. I mean, the R3s suffer from it. Even the R3s have actually got an under track. You see it a lot more in the R3s. You know, yeah. he adds up. <laughs> yeah, he adds up, but belts, unless you've had them replaced. I've done them recently, yeah. yeah. I've done them recently. What, what do you know on the calls, leads, and plugs will last replaced? 10K. On the calls, plugs, and leads? I think so. Yeah, plugs would definitely recommend them. Yeah, you can tell if they're in good condition. Yeah, yeah we can yeah, expect yeah. them, yeah. But I can't that and age, I would definitely recommend getting the whole full of Alex was talking about clean oil feeds. Mm. Sean Adapter has been about for ages. Design, I'm not a massive fan of. If I was going to do it, I'd use the clean oil feed system for Ryan Rotary. The double O ring fitting, you're not talking about paper gaskets, a spacer between the oil metering pump and the front cover. The good thing about using a clean oil feed system is it's not only you're using clean your oil, it's the fact you can actually run fully synthetic Different inside the engine. Yeah. Um, which is obviously better for the bearings. So it is a good idea, a good thing to do. It's a good idea. However, I would still recommend pre-mixing. A lot of people will fit a clean oil feed system and think, yeah, that's it, I'm getting clean oil, that's great. But you still have the issue of not having enough oil going in. So okay, you'll have to teach me how because I've yeah. never done yeah. it before. And uh, The idea of changing oil every 3,000 miles feels like, first, I don't like the waste. And second, it has a cost over time might as well have paid for a system that helps the engine last yeah. longer how, how often would you change the the synthetic uh, 20 i know i'd still keep it sure really i'd still keep it like 10 12 000. okay okay um, like a regular normal maintenance on a normal your definition of regular is <laughs> different yeah, from yeah, mine yeah. then okay fair enough if you're doing like a big diesel audi no one changes yeah that's the thing you're 20 30,000. <laughs> um, there was um cold air thing. yeah i've got a cold air intake that i fitted myself a basic one i think it's a jab, jab speed one yep. but i did add a mesh in front of the math and i haven't had a problem since however i had the loss of compression about a year after fitting it and I wonder if the two things were related I wonder if I should keep it or get rid of it or personally Mazda spend millions on R&D I would personally just run the stock air box mm. with the can and panel filler okay to take fresh air feed because the reason I've done it and wasn't neither for performance or noise was to make the engine bay more accessible so we might refit that it's in the boot yeah, that's the thing. I actually don't know. But given the mileage, I have a suspicion. Do engine regular get to that kind of mileage? It's mainly, yeah. A lot of people, it will get to 60,000 and people are like, oh, I need a rebuild, you know. Because they read it. Oh, right. 60,000 right. miles in the rebuild, but it's not. Brian on the owner's club, that's his old car. The engine, he's like, he's, he's always looked after it, it's servicing, he's never used premium fuel, uh, never premixed. But that's, that's not 100 and something thousand. There you go. And it's still got mid six bar compression. It's wow. still got a strong engine. Wow. So it's like. Do you mind if we have a quick look? Well, you wanted to know whether it's been rebuilt or, or not well, before. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the red ones are known, velocity red alone for fading and the known for rusting. The red one specifically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. red. What? Red and yellow. It will look completely different when you get it back. All in here, 
Do you want to keep all this? If you remove all the carpet, it makes it so much better. All that. Without? Yeah, remove all the carpet, and obviously it'd just be painted surface, so it looks a lot cleaner. It's not for heat, it's more for noise. The clips don't look like they've been moved for a hell of a long yeah. time. We're not going to want to put rusty old clips back on a brand new engine, basically. How important is this one? Is quite corroded. It's mainly there for the battery and battery tray mount to it, the oil lines mount to it. So it is quite important because the batteries aren't yeah, light. You take the battery tray out and there's a hole there. And you can just drill out the spot welds, remove it, and then get one off a breaker or something. I doubt you'd be able to buy that part new from Mazda. Yeah, we're, we're, we're we're nice. Are you lucky enough to still be low tax or not? Yes. Yeah. That's the entire reason I'm yeah. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, I've got on the rear rotor 6.7, I think, from one and 4.9. What should I expect? Uh, after a thousand miles running, you should see five sixes, low sevens. We'll get to average. the sevens potentially. Yeah, 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 definitely get sevens. Um, but it, again, it depends what, how how far you go. And what we'll do, yeah. yeah, and obviously if you do do porting, naturally you will lower the compression by porting. I really like your thinking, focusing on the restoring that yeah. strength rather yeah. than adding stuff for the sake of it. Yeah, for longevity, it'll be well worth it. When can I come back? It'll be out, it'll be stripped it'll be... in pieces on the bench. The following week, at best, it'll be going back together. There's Especially no, when there's... you do things like regrowing houses, lap dying oh, stuff. Yeah. They've got to be sent they've away. They've got to be sent off. Yeah, they've got to be sent off. There's no way I'd ever turn a car, customer's car around in a day or two. We've got to test drive it. It's not safe. What a learning curve. I showed up thinking that I was gonna get some street porting, a modded car, and instead I've left Roy to be rebuilt to factory standards, to bring the engine back to when it was made. If not better, no, I, don't, I wouldn't think so. We gotta see scratches and conditions inside. We have no idea, it's a closed box, and I hope it was worth doing all that rust work. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Many of you are commenting on how the content that we're putting online is of high quality and we really like to make good content, good material that you can enjoy. The beautiful community around driving passion. Please like, please share, let your friends know, people that might be interested and uh, I'll see you next time to whatever happens with Roy next. See you soon.